So stabilizing footage in DaVinci Resolve is actually pretty easy. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when you are doing it, so let's jump into what those are. So the first thing that you wanna make sure of is whatever footage that you're looking to stabilize, make sure it's only the piece of footage that you're actually gonna be using. You don't wanna stabilize a 10 minute clip if you're only gonna be using 30 seconds of it. So here in our timeline, we have a couple of shots and they all have a bit of a shake that is a little bit different from one from the other. And we'll get into how to stabilize these and a couple of problems that we end up having when we do stabilize them. So now that they're in our timeline and we're ready to stabilize them, we're gonna come over to the color tab. In the color tab, Typically we use a tracker if we're going to be tracking a power window, also known as a mask, to a particular thing that we're going to color, you know, block out, whatever it may be. So we would come over to our tracker and then we would get the tracking information, we would apply it to that particular mask and then it would follow it around. We use the same tool, but we come over to the stabilizer and it's gonna do the same exact thing. It's gonna analyze the clip and then it's gonna be affected by our cropping ratio and our smooth value. So it's very simple. We just click on stabilize when, we're, when we have that clip selected. And what it's gonna do is it's going to analyze the clip and then add the stabilization to it. So now if we look at that clip, it's pretty stabilized then from where it was. If we turn off the, the uh, stabilization, we can see how much it was shaking around before. And then we turn it back on and it's looking pretty stabilized. So what are all of these different things and can we get better results? So the cropping ratio is the amount that we're allowing the program to crop into a shot. If we take a look at this and we turn it off, we can see over here, it's cropping a little bit of this out. Now remember that this particular shot doesn't have a ton, but it, it does have some uh, I guess they would be referred to as like micro jitters or something of that nature. And so there is some stabilization being added to it. And when we add it, it crops in a little bit. And what that's at, what it's actually doing is it's just cropping the stuff that, so that everything in the frame is visible, a visible part of the shot. If we watch up here, when we don't have zoom enabled, what we see is that the shot is jumping around and what it's actually doing is the shot itself is stabilized so if i was to let's open this back up and we go into zoom it's only going to in this frame have stuff that is uh, visible area instead of just having the black behind the shot with it moving around so the crop ratio is the amount we're allowing it to crop in to smooth it as much as possible and then the smooth is how much of a variance there is from frame to frame. The, the, the less variance that there is, the more smooth it's gonna be, but then it's gonna be confined by whatever the crop ratio is. So this, is, this shot will make this more apparent. If we then analyze this shot, we can see it obviously jumps in a lot. The more smooth we want this to be, the more it's going to go in and the less we allow this to crop, the more it's going to go out. But so these kind of like work back and forth together. This is kind of like, I'm only allowing it to zoom in this amount. And then this is how much there's a variance between each one. So we can allow it to zoom in a lot, but not smooth as much, so then it obviously wouldn't zoom in that much. These kind of work back and forth, so I would say always just play with these back and forth. The crop ratio is going to say, okay, I do not want it to go in any further than this, and then the smooth is gonna say, okay, from frame to frame within those confines, how, how smooth do you want each one? Some people like the uh, handheld where it's shaking around a little bit, but you don't want it to, you want to get out those little like micro jitters, um, but you do want it to, you know, kind of float, like they're floating in someone's hands that has like a shoulder rig or something. So yeah, that's kind of how those two work. And then camera lock, I would only use it for shots that are like this, where they're not moving. Like maybe you're just holding the camera there, but you are shaking a little bit and you just want it to look, you know, look like it was on um, a tripod. You would then click this button here and then have it analyze 
and what you'll end up having is it'll like right in here if you look right in here that doesn't ever move at all right but we have some effects going on here and this is just due to the frame itself is moving and with a lot of lenses you have lens distortion this is actual lens distortion so instead of making this look apparent we just allow some bit of the let's uh stabilize that again we just allow some bit of the uh, motion in there so that we don't have that weird warping effect now everything's moving um, together when you are let's say in this case skiing and you have a lot of shake what ends up happening is your movement of the camera is going to make motion blur and that is sometimes not beneficial because if you're going down a hill let's say this way and you're shaking the camera all over you might get motion blur that's going up and down and then you get some really weird results so if we were to stabilize this and then watch this if you watch right at the beginning we have a little bit of um, come back a little bit we have like a little bit of a weird like motion blur going between these shots here but then it doesn't continue even though that they're going the same speed and you have some motion blur here that looks normal but this motion blur that's like right in here looks kind of weird and that's just because the camera is bouncing around so much and you're just making motion blur because the camera's moving around so that's why a lot of people get the stabilization um, rigs that you see where you you know you have the camera on a stick or the Ronins that you know you have the handheld thing a lot of people also get stabilized lenses or if the camera uh, I know a lot of Sony cameras have like the in-body stabilization a lot of that stuff is to stabilize before the light hits the sensor once the light hits a sensor you're gonna get this weird motion blur that in post you kind of can't get rid of it's kind of just like an artifact that's then in there um, so that's just something you know to keep keep in mind when you're um, stabilizing stuff that sometimes you are gonna get weird things that are in there that you kind of can't get rid of there are ways to reduce that a lot so if you knew that you were going to be doing something like this where you were going to be shaking the camera a lot and then in post you were going to then stabilize it one of the things you could do is you could completely get rid of all motion blur obviously some things wouldn't look real because they're gonna skip across the screen because you don't have that motion blur you know showing speed uh, but what you could do is you could increase your shutter speed a lot as long as you have the light to support it and then every single frame will be crisp and then when you add post stabilization to it because every frame is crisp you're not going to have you know that weird motion blur that's there you will probably still have rolling shutter that's another effect um, that you have to keep aware of in, when you're in post but there are some ways to get rid of some of that stuff and that's actually down in here we have three different settings and these are different ways that the information from the tracker is going to be uh, applied to the shot so perspective that is just going to be your left to right your up and down so your pan and tilt and then your roll as well as zoom information all that stuff is then going to be used to build a profile to stabilize the shot similarly that is going to be all the same but then it's going to look at differences between frames to see when motion artifacts are applied so something like this where we have like weird wiggles and stuff like that now you have to remember that this isn't a a magic wand to fix these things there are limitations on what they can actually do so don't think that it's going to be your one trick fix to everything translation that is just going to be your pan and tilt so it's just going to be up and down and left to right that it's going to no roll and no zoom uh, is going to be analyzed to build a profile for stabilizing the footage uh, additionally if you're not having much luck with this you can come over to your classic tracker and for here this is going to be manual on the way in which you can work with this is you can pick the different axes that you want to have tracked and then you click forward and it's going to build your tracking information forward you can come down here these two settings are going to be just like the previous settings on the uh, the new stabilizer and then once you have these two settings set 
to whatever it may be. You then click stabilize and it will then stabilize the shot to whatever these two down here are. Additionally, what you can do is you can come down here and you can go to point tracker. And if you come right into here and then go to OFX overlay, click this little button, we will then get a point. We can then take this point and pick something to track. We can click it again and grab another point and then it'll take those two locations and it will then track and build a stabilized profile off of those two tracking points. So that's another way to stabilize a shot. So let's jump over to this shot. And as you can see with this shot, we have a bunch of wobble going on in here. And this was back when I first started doing commercial work. I didn't have the best of gear. And this was actually a tripod with one of those knockoff like eBay sliders that is kind of made out of aluminum and they're very flimsy. And what ends up happening with that is I had my camera rig on a tripod head that was then on a slider and the slider was then on a tripod. The slider itself was just aluminum. So the camera rig, when I would slide it on the slider, it would bend the slider a little bit and then you would get these weird like bouncing effects. I could do, I could try as hard as I, you know, want it. I could never get it to work. So I knew that that was going to be a thing. So what I ended up doing, and there wasn't much motion here, is I boosted up the uh, shutter speed because I knew that this thing here was bouncing a lot and some of this was bouncing a lot. So I wanted to make sure that they were crisp. So I could just simply just, whoops, come in here, stabilize, and right, right away, I would have a shot that looked pretty good. And I was able to then use this in a TV commercial. There are ways of fixing things, but you just have to know um, going into them what to do to make you know the post process as best as possible. And if you're just an editor and you don't shoot anything, understanding what shots you can use and the limitations of those shots is sometimes good to say, okay, I can use this shot, I can't use this shot, we need to get retakes for this or whatever it may be. So that pretty much sums up how to use the stabilizer in DaVinci Resolve. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. If you have any, any ideas or suggestions on something I should do in the future, let me know down there as well. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.